More breaking news now at noon just into the newsroom. Federal prosecutors will not bring charges in the death of Shanquella Robinson. That announcement coming just minutes after federal authorities met with Robinson's family at the Charlotte FBI headquarters. In a statement from the U.S. attorney and the FBI, the Fed said there was not enough evidence to bring charges. Robinson died in October last year while on a trip to Mexico with friends. The message to the administration is that Obviously, this case did involve foul play that the Mexican authorities have done their due diligence. They have completed a thorough investigation and they've, they're following extradition protocol and have submitted their investigation to the U.S. So the issue is at this point, what is our administration going to do? Are they going to step in and extradite the suspects named in the Mexican authorities investigation or are they going to ask for concurrent jurisdiction and take over the case and do their own investigation and prosecute those responsible um, in the United States. I can say that language is so important and the first obstacle that I've had to combat in representing this family is the amount of misinformation that is in the public. These were absolutely not her friends. I've never referred to them as her friends. Her family members will not refer to the majority of the travel mates as her friends. She actually only had a close relationship with one of the travel mates. The rest of the individuals were just that. And it allows a set of rhetoric and a set of narrative around her murder that has nothing to do with her actual, her as a person or how she came to be murdered. I've been an attorney for almost 17 years. I'm a former prosecutor, criminal defense attorney. I have never had to physically go to another country to investigate on behalf of any family. Is there anything um, that you want people to know about this case and how important it is that this case is a priority to the U.S. government. It It is, it should be an important case to the U.S. government because a U.S. citizen was murdered abroad. And the message from the United States government when a United States citizen is murdered abroad should be that transnational crimes against U.S. citizens are not going to be tolerated. They're not going to be swept under the rug. No details have come to light pertaining to the parties involved in the untimely ending of Shinquela Robinson. The group identified as the Cabo Six knowingly fled Mexico following her passing. In the newly released documents to include the medical examiner's findings, as well as interviews from the hotel staff and law enforcement, there is a transcript by the investigators who spoke with the manager and the concierge at the villa. It's an 18-page information packet, which has already been sent to the president's office, our president, Joe Biden, as well as the State Department. The findings in those documents are quite shocking. It is revealed that Dejanay Jackson currently has a warrant out for her arrest from the Mexican authorities. At first, we were told it was an unnamed party, but I can confirm it's her. In the 18-page information packet, it identifies Dejanay Jackson as the perpetrator of the act of violence against Shanquilla Robinson. Additionally, there was an interview that took place on the 17th of November at 8.45 a.m., where the concierge who was assigned to take care of the group states that the group, on the first night, he noticed that something was off. He said that Shanquilla was the last person to join the group for dinner. And then he stated that she didn't fit in with the others. He said that he greeted her with a smile, but she didn't speak or return the smile. He added that although they were there to party, the atmosphere was not one of celebration. The next day, some time had passed and Dejanay Jackson suddenly texted him around 1.50 p.m. in the afternoon on the 29th, asking if there were any doctors available. She stated that she thought her friend was having an issue with alcohol poisoning and that she needed some emergency assistance. The concierge then offered to send a doctor who would make the determination whether or not she would need to go to the hospital. Then she agreed and said to send the doctor as soon as possible. At 2 p.m., the doctor arrived and that's when the doctor tried to give her the IVs and worked on her for about an hour, which is when she started to have convulsions and was later declared decease of cardiac arrest. 
also in this police report. They spoke with Winter Donovan, who is alleged to have called 911 and asked for the ambulance around 4.20 p.m. So based on the report, they're stating that Shanquilla died between the hours of 5 and 6 p.m., which is almost five hours after Dejanay Jackson initially contacted the concierge for help. The concierge also says that Dejanay told him that Shanquilla wasn't in distress, but she only needed an IV, and he also said that she was practically unconscious. And then the group of them, according to the concierge, said they were discussing whether or not they had insurance that they could pay for her to visit the hospital. The report goes on to say that an administrator contacted the concierge at the hotel to, to notify them of the arrival of the ambulance. And then, after some time had passed, he received notification that Shanquella had passed away. It gets worse, people. So after the police arrive at the villa, the concierge states that when the police were speaking to the six people, they were all sitting calmly around the dinner table. Then he offered condolences and said that Dejanay told him that she had already spoken to Shanquilla's mother and informed her that she had passed away and that she had died quickly from alcohol poisoning. Then he wanted to offer her some comfort by giving her a hug, but she was cold and indifferent and she was not very open to the hug. He continued by saying that all of them except one person described as a skinny girl was visibly upset. I assume this to be Alyssa Hyatt. While all this was happening, Dejanay texted the concierge about arranging dinner and a ride, which he later found out that they had slithered to the airport the next day. When the maid showed up to the villa the next morning, she informed the concierge to his surprise that the villa was empty and they tried to contact Dejanay Jackson, and she never responded. On the 31st, she finally responded and said that she had already left and asked if she needed to sign anything for checkout. The concierge stated that he realized after he saw the news about Shanquilla Robinson's death that Dejanay Jackson had manipulated him and used all her efforts as a tool to leave the country as soon as possible. So as it stands, the ball is in the hands of the United States of America's government to act on this act of violence against a young woman who thought she was going on vacation with her so-called friends, only to return in a body bag. The case is still ongoing, as you know, and when more details become available, I will let you all know. It is time to do an update on the Shanquilla Robinson case. We finally have some notable updates that we can talk about. So the first thing is that the Robinson family now has legal representation and it is pretty high profile. They are now being represented by Ben Crump and Sue Ann Robinson. On March 13th, a letter was sent from Ben Crump and Sue Ann Robinson to the President and the Secretary of State requesting their immediate diplomatic intervention on this case. What they sent was an 18-page letter that details a lot of information that we already knew, as well as new information that was obtained during a fact-finding mission in Mexico. This 18-page letter specifically requests that the U.S. either follow the extradition protocol and turn over the individuals responsible for Shanquilla's unaliving to the Mexican authorities, or the U.S. federal law enforcement agencies can request concurrent jurisdiction with Mexican law enforcement, which would permit U.S. prosecutors to bring the case to the U.S. If you go on my website, baywatch86.com, you will see a post dedicated to this case and a link to the 18-page letter that you guys can read yourself. It's worth it to read. There's interesting evidence in there. Perhaps the most interesting and most like explosive thing from this document is the testimony from a gentleman who was the concierge there at the villas. And this person was the one who interacted the most with Dejanay. 
So we already knew that this was Dejanay's birthday trip. And it's very obvious from the testimony that this individual gave that Dejanay was kind of like the centerpiece of this trip. She's the one that he was in contact with. He had her phone number. He's coordinating events with her. Um, he was pretty much the only person that he had main contact with. So this thing that we saw in the beginning of this case about Shanquilla being the one to pay for everything and all this other stuff, to me was bullshit. And I think this kind of debunks that. So the concierge confirms that Dejanay arrived a little bit later to the villa than planned because she stopped to go shopping and he actually coordinated the transportation from the airport so she could go shopping. But he mentions that there was a couple, he uses the word couple, that arrived at the villas significantly earlier than Dejanay. And it makes me wonder if that was Shanquilla and perhaps Khalil. And the only reason I say that is because we have Instagram stories that show that Shanquilla and Khalil were swimming. Well, at least Shanquilla was in the pool swimming, I think skinny dipping, and Khalil was there, but we don't see the other folks. So it makes me wonder if maybe they arrived early, they were hanging out by the pool, having a good time before the others arrived. Just my speculation. The concierge also confirms that there was a chef on site that prepared a private meal for them, which we already knew from the mother who said that Shanquilla mentioned that to her, that they were going to have a chef preparing like tacos and doing tequila with them. And of course, we saw this in those Instagram videos. According to the concierge's testimony, Shanquilla was the last person to arrive at the table for dinner. And according to his testimony, he's saying that she really didn't look like she was with the group. It was kind of obvious she wasn't with the friends and she didn't really appear to be having a good time. So we know from the video of the attack on Shanquilla that it happened very early in the morning, but the concierge says that he wasn't reached out to until almost two o'clock that afternoon from Dejeuner asking for medical help. So a few hours later, when the concierge learns that Shanquilla has actually passed away, he goes to the villa to offer his condolences. Now he says that the energy in the room was very relaxed. That's the word that he used, that it didn't really look like a bunch of people that just lost their friend. He offers a hug to Dejanay and she's very cold and standoffish with him. She is also the one that mentioned to him that Shanquilla passed away from alcohol poisoning, which again, he thought was kind of weird. Now his testimony does mention that there was a young woman there that was really skinny and that she was really, really sad. And it makes me wonder if that was Elise. She's very slender. And remember, her sister had been unalived the day before in North Carolina. So she could have been sad about that. The concierge said that when he left the room where everybody was, he heard laughter when he walked out. What? Now around 9 p.m. that evening, this is the same day that Shanquilla has just been unalive, Dejanay reaches out to the concierge again to ask for transportation to go to dinner because nobody had eaten all day and they wanted to go to dinner. So the concierge arranges for this. But what he does not know is that they actually had the driver take them to an airport hotel. The next day, which would have been Sunday, the maid goes into the room and notices that no one's there. The concierge tries to reach out to Dejanay. She is non-responsive until the following day, which is Monday, which also happened to be Halloween. And she lets the concierge know that she's back in the States. And is there anything she needs to do to check out from the hotel? Which again, makes me think that everything was in her name and not Shanquilla's. So y'all remember that video, that horrific video of Shanquilla being attacked. So according to this document, on November 16th, 2022, one of the travel mates shared a video from a cell phone camera around the campus of Winston-Salem University, the college that Shanquilla Robinson attended. And this is also where these other folks attended as well. They all met at school. Why would somebody on this trip wait two whole weeks, two weeks to circulate this video? Why wouldn't you delete it? why would you have such a key piece of evidence that you would release to the world like that because remember around the 16th of november is when this case really started to pop off on social media now that concierge says that when he saw that video and it went viral he was shocked completely shocked because he recognized dejanay on site and shanquilla and was completely horrified because that's when he realized like something really really went down in that room it is shameful that a family a grieving family who lost their child in the most horrific and traumatic way should have to write a letter to the President of the United States and the Secretary of State to try to gain traction on this case because there has been no movement. We know who was there. We have their names. We have their addresses. We have evidence of them being on film watching this girl get attacked. What is the holdup? I'm not mad at Mexico. Too many people are making this about Mexico. I'm mad at the United States for their inaction on this case. An American did this to her. A group of Americans. 
Now, the White House did um, acknowledge the letter being sent to the president and the secretary of state. They offered their condolences and basically said that there wasn't much that they could comment on because there was an active investigation with the FBI, which to me is a cop out because the FBI is clearly not communicating with the Robinson family. I think it would be in the best interest of the FBI and quite frankly the US in general to do some sort of a press conference in the near future like within the next week or two to address this case and to provide the family and the public an update because right now it's not looking good. Either to like, share, comment, and save. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click the bell for more content. Black then and I'm black now. Black fist, black power. Black pain look like black rain. See, our tears turn to spring showers and nourish the rose that grew from the concrete. <laughs> That's a black flower. Let's talk about it. The black of the berry, the sweet of the juice. Oh,